Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Era of Kingdoms. This is the expansion review for the game Inquisition, which is attached to this game, not a standalone. And in Inquisition, you're going to be getting two new main parts to the game Era of Kingdoms. One is the science track, so you'll be able to move up on your board. And the other is the religion tracker, which will let you choose between three different religions and, of course, upgrading cards as you proceed with that religion. There's going to be new cards, as well as additional tokens and followers slash heretics, as well as unique one-time bonuses and permanent bonuses that you can get throughout the game. This is going to be a review for just mainly the expansion here, but I will be talking about some of the additional things I didn't cover in my previous video when I discussed it. Had a weird voice and uh, people greatly loved that so I, I decided to throw that one away and just go for a regular review here. Uh, but in this game you're basically going to be doing a tableau management of sorts. You'll have your own kingdom. You're going to be then placing down cards in the land area and the people area and then of course the expansion content which is moving up these tracks by purchasing tokens with actions be it whether it be from the science or from the religion. The game will end after somebody finds the card in the the advanced deck that will trigger the end of the game, and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Will you develop your kingdom the best in Era of Kingdoms Inquisition? We'll find out after I talk about how to set up the expansion, how to play, and then of course my review. So let's discuss how to set up the game Era of Kingdoms, but just for the Inquisition, as I've already made a previous video and there's a link down below in the description if you'd like to see how that is done. For the expansion, you are going to give every single player, in addition to their main game board, the new tech tracks. You're going to put one on one side, which is going to be the production and government, and the one on the other, which is architecture and military. Then you're going to go ahead and place the unlocked tokens down below those tracks, symbolizing that as you unlock these tracks, they'll move up. You're also going to give each player a religion board. It'll start with a blank worship land area, space for heretics, a space for your followers, and a space for your religion tokens. Set that above your game board. Additional setup will require you to create the different types of religions. You're going to have little card packs that are going to tell you on the back what cards go in them, and you are going to put them on these little platforms, these little church-like tokens. That way everybody within reach can take these when they want to purchase them using religion tokens. Make sure you're also going to be setting aside any of your one-time use don't bonuses, your science slash tech and religion markers, and any other tokens you might be needing in the game. That's going to come with additional victory points markers and markers for the different types of resources, attack and defense, as well as of course forever resources that you can get from the tech tra track tree. And once you have all that set up, in addition to whatever the main game board says to start with, then you are basically ready to go after shuffling on all the new cards for the basic, intermediate, and advanced decks. Inquisition adds additionally a new action type, and the type is to gather your tokens. There are two tokens in the game you'll be gathering, the tech tokens and the religion tokens. Religion tokens will go on the religion board in the little circles provided, and the tech tokens are going to be placed somewhere offside the board, which you can use to upgrade your tech tree. Other actions include placing down cards cards onto your tableau, as well as of course drawing cards from the basic deck. And your objective is to place down the lower tier 1 cards, then put tier 2 on them and tier 3, and have the resources required in order to place down the cards. There are four different types of resources that you need to know about. There's the people, there's the iron, there's the different types of uh, grass or wheat, and then there's wood. And it's cumulative resources, so if you have two wood and two wheat, that will sustain you for the entire round when you play cards. If you have two cards that require both of those, you can put both of those down. They're not like currency where you spend them, you just have to have them in order to utilize them. What the additional expansions bring though is being able to use actions for tokens. There's also ways to get tokens in the basic and intermediate decks that will supply your specific religion or your different techs. There are additional bonus actions in the game as well. Now you can spend tokens for free that will allow you to A, spend tokens involving tech to move up the tech tree based on the cost of that tier. So one tech token for tier one, two for tier two, and three for three, tier three, and so on and so forth. You can also buy religions. You can buy these little packs of cards that are going to cost you seven or six or 
eight religious tokens in order to get this deck of cards that you can utilize just like the basic cards in the game. And you're going to basically be taking those and adding them to your hand, but they're separate. They don't count as part of your maximum hand size and you can only use them once. They're gonna get discarded. They cannot be taken back from the discard pile. Well, for the most part, the first one you have to buy is uh, the number six pack. That's gonna give you your uh, worship land and from there you can get the seven and eight, just like you would with, when it comes to leveling up from one to two and one to three. Um, and you'll be taking those cards and using them. And of course, you can purchase more of those cards, but only from the same religion. You can never switch religions after you've chosen one. The other action involving moving up these tech markers, these are going to give you permanent bonuses along the, uh, along the way. As you move up using these uh, tech tokens, you're going to be increasing the value of your specific types of tech trees, like production, and it'll give you one-time bonus markers. Uh, these things are going to start off like this, filled flasks, and they're going to flip over and be utilized when you have done them. And it'll tell you on the board whether it's a permanent or it's a one-time use. And if it's a one-time use, you flip it over, it signifies that you've used it, and then you can keep going along the track. And those are the main aspects of the game. You're going to notice that there are things called followers that you can gain for your religions by spending uh, three religious tokens. Um, and of course, there are heretics. These things will pop up depending on the cards that you get from the religion deck or even the basic slash intermediate deck that you can give or get uh, to other for other players or for or yourself depending on what cards you place. And then of course the permanent bonuses affect the tech tree. There's a specific one in the production that says you can get a resource of your type that lasts forever. It's going to allow you to play more cards. And uh, in the decks here, there uh, for the religious decks, they're going to be giving you uh, characters, uh, locations, one-time use actions, and so on and so forth. They're going to better your specific religion that you chose. And there's three different types. There's one that's more aggressive, there's one that's more cunning, and there's one that's a little bit more defensive. And it's kind of really up to you what you decide to go for for in the game. But that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're gonna get an additional one action, so you'll get four actions on your turn instead of just the normal three from the original era of kingdoms, and you can use them to play cards, draw basic cards, buy the tokens for the tech, or buy the tokens for religion, which you can use to either upgrade tech or you can use to purchase your religious packs that you can use to play as normal cards would be in your hand, even though they're not part of your maximum hand size. The game still ends the same way after a certain number of cards from the advanced deck based on the number of players, so like a three-player game, there's going to be a card in the 11th slot, which is going to trigger the end of the game in which everybody gets one more turn. Uh, and then you're going to check to see whoever has the most victory points by looking at the bottom right-hand side of each of the cards, adding up those victory points, including any other cards you might have from your followers, etc., etc. And that player is the winner and controls the kingdom and <laughs> will dominate the world, I guess, or at least this era of kingdoms. All right, so before we get into reviewing the main expansion, I want to talk a little bit about the additional bonuses that I didn't see from the previous game because the previous game was a prototype and so was this one. This one has prototype components to it. But the new game now has got this board here and this board is a draft board. You'll be able to pur purchase cards from this area here and this area here and so on and so forth. Kind of give you kind of an option as to what you can pick and it's kind of a bonus mini expansion that's going to be added in the game if you would like to. And there are rules for this for all the mini expansions in the main game and it is included and option operated within the Era of Kingdoms Inquisition as well. And there's additional mini expansions too, and you can look through at the very end of this book here to either play a different scenario called Conquest of the King. There's a solo mode that's available to you as well. And then you're going to have the different mini expansions like the Commerce expansion, or you can play as uh, the Trade Routes expansion, etc., etc. Uh, and these are going to incorporate new and additional cards that you will get in the base game, which you can then add if you would like. There are trade cards that will be added for the trade expansion, you're going to be getting um, a bountiful goods, etc, etc, and it tells you in each of the expansions what you can put in based on what you'd like to play with, and they all incorporate with each other, and in fact some require you to have the trade routes expansion in order to play with those as well. In the Inquisition game, which I imagine there probably is going to be extra stuff even that I don't have here because this is an expansion, you are going to be focusing on two different things, because you're going to be getting tokens. You get a bonus action on your turn, and you get the option to purchase tokens, which you can use as free actions to buy stuff, right? Uh, the tokens for the 
the tech tree is going to improve the value of whatever it is you're trying to push up on the track here. If it's military, it's going to be for attacking other players. If you're dealing with architecture, you're going to be getting additional turns and slots and hand size. Production is all about resources. And then the government is going to be all about one-time use actions that are going to give you some type of benefit throughout the game, uh, which is rather nice. It's very simple and very straightforward how they are used. In addition to getting all these benefits and bonuses by utilizing your actions, in certain decks, you're going to find cards that will say something like, if you have a tier three this or that, gain a point at the end of the game. Or if you are able to play this card and all of your markers are pushed up to tier three, you'll get one point for each one that is. And it goes on from there. And that's basically how it works as incorporated with not only this, but also with the religion board as well. And then the religion board buying these religious tokens, hoping to gain followers by spending three. And there's certain cards that will give you benefits for followers. There's certain basic people that you can get rid of and sacrifice, so to speak, that will give you additional followers as well, which can involve victory points. And then the cards themselves. They're always going to start off with giving you a worship land, which is always going to be free to play to start as soon as you buy it which basically just tells you that you can purchase followers and it's kind of like what your religion is. And then that specific type of religion's cards, whether it be aggressive or defensive or somewhere in between, a little bit of a cunning nature. And you can utilize those cards. It's nice too, they're not actually part of your hand, but you can utilize them as though they are. Once they're used, they're kind of one-time uses. And once they're played or re and, and then removed, they don't come back, but you're able to purchase them based on tiers, kind of like the tech tree. And both the tech tree and religion are different in nature but feel the same as far as complexity goes. You understand that you need to spend the tokens to improve upon that specific thing that you're doing. They will either give you one-time bonuses and upgrades or it will give you the nice fancy cards that you can utilize. They're very powerful but you have to use them wisely and when you use them it's going to make a big difference. And it's all incorporated within this era of Kingdoms game. This game is a tableau management game uh, on steroids. It's got a ton and I mean a ton of cards and a ton of different expansions that you can add to the game. It starts off where you're just placing down a mountain, a forest, a plains, and then you're going to be building on top of those. You'll need more resources in order to do so. You can utilize people that will help you and the cost of all your resources associated with them. And now there's presented new ways in which you can use, use and gain resources, which involve the tech trees. And there's new and unique ways in which you can play cards from the religion area. I really, really dig this expansion. Uh, this game was very popular, and I really had a good time with this one back in the past. I think I gave it a pretty positive review. And this here is just more goodness on top of it with unique twists and turns. Uh, if I were to choose to play this game again, I would always incorporate this expansion. This is, it's not a needed expansion because the game is so good on its own, but with this just comes a more great Era of Kingdoms feel. It's going to give you unique twists that you can add different cards and play different cards, and I really enjoyed that. I like the fact that you can also kind of choose in which route you want to go. It just pro provides more of that. Do I want to push up on these two tech trees, all of them slowly? Do I want to pick a specific religion and keep pushing up? Do I want to do a little bit of everything? And you can do that. There's no really right way or wrong way to do certain things. I mean, I get there is, <laughs> but there's no wrong way in which you can choose to go about getting the upgrades and benefits. I don't feel like I have to go up one board in order to win, or I have to get one specific religion, or I have to get uh, only part of this religion and part of these. It's, I, I have options to do whatever I want to do. I can focus primarily on my board. I don't need to use any of these expansion actions, or if it's for a player who's not really you know, as, as advanced in this game, they can simply focus on their board and still have just as much of a chance of winning as a player who actually has all the actions that they can utilize for these boards. So I'm just getting the benefit of doing more stuff that I'd like to do. I played this game originally um, with the, all this stuff included with new players who had never played the game before, and all of them were able to play their own game. One of them played the religion, one of them played just the tech, and then one of them focused on primarily just the game board. Well, I kind of did a little dip in my feet of everything because I really wanted to see what everything was all about. And everyone had a good time. Everyone was within, was within four to five points of each other, and it felt really good at the end of the game. Nobody felt like they were just kind of left out. And you still could tell that there was a clear and present victor based on the choices they made in the game. It has that aggressive nature where you can attack opponents and the religions will kind of give you that benefit as well as the specific military tree will. And then it has the option to be more defensive, playing down defensive maneuver cards, giving yourself trebuchets to score more additional points in the game. Certain characters are going to give you more victory points, but might not be as beneficial or might be really beneficial depending on what you get. And 
there's a wide variety where your board is never going to look the same no matter how many times you play this game. That being said, yes, Era of Kingdoms Inquisition is an excellent expansion for Era of Kingdoms. This one is going to easily be picked up. If you've played Era of Kingdoms, you own it, and you like that game, buy Inquisition. I strongly support this expansion, and I think you guys are going to dig it. Yes, this gets my seal of approval once again. I believe I gave it the last time, and if I didn't, I was stupid because I <laughs> picked this game up again and played it, and I really, really enjoyed it. This is going to sit on my shelf right over here because I'm going to be playing this again, and hopefully on my live stream as well this following week up here. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. The link in the description is currently available for you to pick up the game Era of Kingdoms Inquisition if you would like. If not, it should be a website for the time in which it will be up and available for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Era of Kingdoms Inquisition. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button. You can also go ahead and hit that link in the description. Like I said, that will give you a link to the previous reviewed video of my like super old video. I looked a little uh, heavier, a little hairier, and I also sounded a little different in the very first three or four minutes. But it doesn't last the whole time, I promise. <laughs> and of course, you can check out the website. It gives all kinds of good stuff. Uh, my live stream is every Wednesday. No. Sunday. Wednesday was years ago. Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one live on stream. You can see it played and you can see for yourself if it's something you'd like to pick up. And of course, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to delving into the era of kingdoms with you next time.